Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be scripting the settings GUI that we created in the last episode. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. To showcase the features that we're going to be creating today, as we can see on the right hand side of the screen, we have the the settings button. When we click this, a little menu pops up and it has a couple of the different settings. We have the pop-up effects, music, SFX, and trade requests. Whenever we click on one of these buttons, it goes from the button being green and displaying on to being red and displaying off. And it also does what those specific settings do as well. Additionally, if we hit the X button right here, that closes the GUI. And that's exactly what we're going to be recreating today. So hopping right back into the studio, if we go inside of the start of GUI and we look inside of settings, let's go ahead and re-enable this so we can actually see the GUI. Now inside of the settings, GUI, we have a script name manager because I believe we duplicated the max food GUI and use that as sort of the template for making this GUI. Let's go ahead and open up the manager script and we see we have a bunch of different variables already created in here, which most of these we can delete. So we most likely won't need any of these parts. We might need remote, so I'll leave that for now. With the workspace, we probably won't need each of these buns we'll delete because we'll manually add them ourselves. And then for the GUI, let's rename this to screen GUI. That will be the script.parent, so that'll be the settings GUI right Right there and then let's start making a couple more variables so we're going to say local frame equals screen gui dot frame then what we're going to need is we need the exit button and also the container those are probably the only things that we're actually going to be changing or scripting the title and the subtitle don't ever need to be modified so we won't be using them so let's go ahead and initialize variable for the exit button so we can just say exit or exit button equals frame dot exit button there we go we've now got that and then let's also add the container as well so local container equals frame dot container now, instead of saying just frame.container, because this is just a frame, and remember inside of our container frame, we have a container scrolling frame, which will be the actual container. We only made this container frame specifically so that we can have the UI corner. So this is kind of like a fake container. It's basically just a normal frame, and we're not actually using this as a container. Hopefully that's not too confusing, but what we're going to initialize the container variable to is not actually just frame.container. It's actually going to be frame.container.container, .container, and this will be the scrolling frame, the real container. Container. Now inside of the container, we also have the template. If you guys watched my video when I made the shop GUI, we also had a template inside of this one as well. But rather than being inside of the container, we actually parented that to the manager module script. Recently, when I've been working on other projects, rather than putting this somewhere outside of the actual container, I've been leaving this in for now. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys a different way of handling this compared to when we created the shop GUI. But when you think about this, just remember how we did the template back when we created the shop GUI, we're going to be going through a very similar process while creating creating the settings UI as well. And hopefully by the end of the video, you guys will be know exactly what I mean if this is confusing to you at all. So what we then also want to do is we want to initialize a variable for the template. So we're going to say local template equals container dot template. So now that we got most of the variables that we're going to be using initialized, I actually forgot one pretty important thing. And the thing that we should have done first is actually scripting the settings button. So let's go ahead and open up the bun screen GUI. And inside of the bun holder is where we have the actual settings bun itself. Now, one way that we could go about this is inside of the bun GUI, we have the manager script right here. And what we could do is we could initialize a variable similar to how we have the cell bun already created. We could also create the settings bun and then handle it the same exact way. But rather than doing that, we're going to handle it a little bit differently as well. Hopefully me showing you has multiple ways of handling the same thing will help you guys learn for the future all the different ways that you guys can do this and i really hope it isn't causing more confusion than it is helping and learning definitely leave me feedback in the comment section down below though because it really helps me learn the best way to actually teach you guys and present you guys the different ideas and ways of doing stuff with that being said we're going to close this manager and we're going to go back inside of the settings ui and we're going to create another local script and we're just going to call this button what we then want to do is we want to create a variable for the buttons gui so what we're going to do is we're going to say local buttons gui equals script dot parent dot parent now remember script dot parent would be settings dot parent would then be the starter gui in this example and then what we could do is we could say dot buttons which gives us the bun screen gui now from here we want to create a variable specifically for the settings button and that's going to be equal to the bun gui dot button holder dot settings and now we have the settings button we'll also create a variable for the screen gui which is going to be the settings gui so local screen gui 
equals script.parent, and that's equal to the settings GUI. Then what we want to do is whenever we click the settings button, so settings button dot mouse button one click, connect, and we'll just create a new function inside of here. So we'll say function screen GUI dot enabled equals not screen GUI dot enabled. So if it's enabled, then it'll set that to not enabled. So if enabled is set to true, it'll then set it to false, or if it's equal to false, then it'll set it to true. And we can go ahead, start up our game and test this out ourselves. If we click on settings, we can see it's no longer visible. If we click the button again, it becomes invisible and we can keep doing that and it works exactly as it should. So now we should be completely done with this script. We can go ahead and close the button script and move on from there. What we want to do is we want to create a module script, which contains all the settings and some different information about them. It's basically going to be a config file that we already have experience with creating. So let's go inside of the replicated storage inside of the config folder, and let's just go ahead and create a new module script. We'll rename this to settings. And now we have local module equals a table, and then we return that. So inside the table, we want to create a new table and each individual table is going to hold all the properties of specific settings. So the first property is going to be ID and the first setting we'll create is pop-up underscore effects. And remember this is going off eating simulator. So this is just going to be an example and it's going to be using the settings that they also use. So we're going to set the ID to pop-up effects. We'll also set a description as well. And the description for this setting is disable the pop-up effects for coins and food. We'll also have an enabled property and we'll set that to true because by default, all the settings in eating simulator are set to true. And now we want to add another setting to this as well. So we'll just copy this table and then just paste it. And now instead of filling out all these properties or all these fields, again, what I'm going to do is we're just going to set the description to something different. So we can easily see that when we display this in the GUI, okay, the description is this. Of course, if you're making your own game and you already have your ideas for the settings, you can of course input the actual description. So the next setting that we're going to do is music. We'll also duplicate this again. And instead of music, we'll say SFX and we'll set this description to 22222. We could actually set this to 11111 to make it more easy to differentiate between them. And then finally, we have trade requests. And we're going to set this to 33333. There we go. So that's going to be all of our settings for right now. Let's hop back into our manager script. And let's also close all the GUIs that we're not going to be using. So just close the bunch GUI. And there we go. Now inside of here, what we want to do is we want to get the settings config file. So we're going to say local settings equals replicated storage, wait for child, config, wait for child, settings. There we go. We now have the settings. Now, the first thing that we can do, which is the easiest just to get out of the way, is we can script the exit button. So we have exit, mouse button, one click, connect, create a function inside of here. And whenever we click this, we want to set the screen GUI enabled to false. So we want to make it not visible. And now that's completely out of the way. Let's then create a new function and we're going to call this generate setting. Now, the parameter that this is going to accept is going to be called setting, and it's actually going to be a table because it's going to be one of the tables that we created in the settings config file. For example, we'll pass this entire table through to this specific function. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a new variable called clone, and that's actually going to be the template, and we're going to clone this. Once we clone this, what we want to do is we want to then parent this to the container because we want to have all of our settings inside of the container. Then let's rename the frame to the specific setting. And remember, the way that we have the name set up in inside of our setting is by the ID property. So we're going to say setting.id. If we look inside of the frame, inside of the container, and inside of the template, this is the clone just for reference. If you guys aren't following along exactly, this template is what we're cloning right here. So this would be the clone variable. Inside of the template, we have the title. If we look at the title, this is the name of the setting. So what we're then going to do is we're going to say clone.title.text equals, and we want to also set that to the setting.id. Now, since setting.id is a string. We can actually use a method on this called G sub. This basically allows you to filter out certain characters or letters inside of a specific string. So we're going to say G sub, and then what we're going to pass through is what we want to replace. And what we want to replace inside of the ID is underscore. And the reason that we want to replace underscore is because we have pop-up underscore effects. If we display pop-up underscore effects in the GUI, we don't want the underscore to be there. We want the underscore to actually be replaced by a space like we have right here. So inside of the G sub, we now have this is what we want to be replaced, comma, and this is what we're going to replace it with. And then we're just going to hit space. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get the description. So if we see right here, the description is a text label, and we're going to set that text to setting 
dot description. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we have the button right here, and currently it displays on, and its background color is also a pretty bright green. So what we want to do is we want to decide on the on and off colors. For instance, right now it's 47, 214, and 28. So what we're going to do is at the top of our manager script, right underneath template, we're going to create a constant variable. We're going to say local on color equals color three dot from RGB and we're going to paste this color into there and as we can see the color is displayed right there that nice green that we already have and then we're creating another one instead of on this is going to be off so this is the color that is specifically going to be whenever we set the value to off and we'll just set it to a nice little red just like that so we've got green for on and we've got red for off the reason that we're putting in all capital letters is because that is what a constant is this variable will never change we're just always going to reference this at a specific time what we then want to do is we want to say clone dot button dot background color three equals and now what we want to do is we want to say if the setting dot enabled which means that the setting is enabled or enabled equals true then we want to set it to the on color else we want to set it to the off color so if enabled equals false for that specific setting then the off color will be used but if enabled equals true then the on color will be used exactly as it should be additionally we want to set the clone dot button text to on or off based on if it is enabled or not so what we can do is we can just copy this and paste it so if setting dot enabled is true then we want to set the text to on but if it's false then we want to set it to off the final thing that we want to do is we want to set the visibility of this to true and you might be confused by that but the reason for that is because we're actually going to set the template to not visible because we don't want a template to be displayed we only want the ones that we create to be displayed and that's why we're leaving the template inside of here because we can easily just set it to not visible and then set all of the duplicates or clones of it to visible when we need to. So what we're then going to do is in between the exit button and the function that we just created, let's loop through all of the settings. So we're going to say setting table in pairs and we'll loop through settings and then we're going to call the generate setting function and we'll pass through the setting table. Additionally, let's hide the settings UI by setting the enable to false and start up our game and test this out. Ah, of course, I made a little mistake. When we initialize the settings variable, I actually forgot the keyword, which is required because that is a module script. So we need to surround that in a require statement. And now that should work perfectly. So let's go ahead, start this up and test it out. So now upon starting it up, you can hit the settings GUI button and we can see that music was generated with the 111 description. And we can even confirm this by looking in the module script itself. So we can see 11111 two, 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 and three, 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 three. Those all worked exactly as they should. And let's also click the exit button and we can see that now hides the GUI, which is perfect. Additionally, we need a script when we click on the on button and set that to off. And we also need to script the individual settings as well. Back inside of the manager below where we set the visibility to true, what we want to do is we want to get the button and we want to do something whenever we click this. So the first thing we want to do is if we remember back to the settings module script that we created, we have the little enabled property right here. We actually want to change the value of this to the opposite of what it currently is whenever we click the button and we've already done this with the screen gui in the button script example and what i mean by that is anytime we click the settings button we set the enabled to the opposite of what it already is and that's exactly what we're going to do here so we're going to say setting dot enabled equals not setting dot enabled so that'll set it to the opposite of what it currently is then we also want to change the background color of the button exactly like how we already do here so we can just copy and paste that directly into here and then the same exact thing goes with the text we can copy and paste that directly into here as well because if it's currently on and we set that to off we then want to change the color and the text so it displays that as well let's go ahead and start this up and make sure that all works perfectly so open up settings click on it now changes the off and that should work for all of them and it does so that works exactly as it should perfect so now we're going to do is we're going to actually add music to our game so that I can showcase how you guys can actually disable or enable certain things in your game when it comes to settings. Considering we don't have trading and that's a lot harder to implement, I figured music would be the easiest one for me to display how you could actually use settings in your game. So to add music into our game, what we're simply going to do is we're going to go inside of the sound service right down here and we're going to add in a sound. Now just for this specific sound, I'm going to add in some random music that I found from the marketplace. The sound ID is going to be this one right here. You 
you can use whatever sound ID you want for your own music. Then what we also want to do is since this is going to be the background music that is playing while our player just passively plays the game, we're going to set loop to true so that the song is always repeating itself even when it runs the full duration. Additionally, we want to rename this just to background music so that we know what it is. The next thing that we want to do is inside of the settings GUI, let's make a brand new module script and we're going to rename this to handler. Now this is going to handle how the settings actually change or affect certain things. So the first thing that we want to do is let's go ahead and get the sound service. So we're going to say local sound service equals game get service sound service. We can also get the background music. So we can say local background music equals sound service wait for child background music and now when our game starts up we actually want to play the background music so we're going to add that right down here we're going to say background music play so that it begins playing the music and now just so i can quickly test this out and show you guys that this works let's go inside of our manager and just require this script real quick so we're going to say local handler equals require script dot parent dot handler and now that will require the module script meaning that the module script will run through so let's go ahead and start up our game and make sure that the background music does play okay so we can now hear the background music playing it is a really weird music i'm not gonna lie but it is playing so that's good the next thing we need to do is we need to actually get the settings config file that we made earlier we already did this inside of our manager script so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste exactly how we already did it so we just need to get the settings variable and the replicated storage and there we go we now have the settings config module Let's go ahead and create a function inside of this module, which is going to be a public function. So we're going to say module dot music, and this will control the music setting. So what we want to do is let's just say, for example, just to build this out, we're going to say if true, then, and then of course, if the setting is true, we want to play the music. So we're going to say play. Otherwise we want to pause the song. So if we set the setting to true, we want to play. If we set it to false, then we want it to stop or pause. Now the thing is, is that we could call this function, but we need to figure out what what the value of what enabled is for the music set. And since this is an array and it's not actually a dictionary, we can't index this table with the ID. So we can't say something like if settings dot music because dot music doesn't actually exist. So we need to make a specific function to do this. So let's create a new function and this is going to be called get setting by ID and it's going to accept ID, which is a string. So what we want to do is similarly to how we loop through the settings in our manager script, we're going to loop through them the exact same way. So we're going to say for underscore because we're not using the index setting table in pairs settings do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say if the setting table dot ID equals the ID that we pass through, then we just want to return the setting table. So back inside of the music method, what we're going to do is we're going to say local info equals get setting by id and we're going to pass through music and now inside of our if statement instead of saying if true we're going to say if info dot enabled then and we're going to say play or pause based on whatever that value is additionally whenever we call this method let's go ahead and print out the info dot enabled just so we can visually see this as well now back inside of our manager we already required the script so we have the handler right there what we then want to do is whenever we click this button we want to actually call one of those specific methods now this is something that's pretty cool that we haven't gone over in this series and it might be a little confusing at first but you'll understand it and get used to it eventually we want to specifically remember the id of the specific setting and make sure that any function we create inside of this module script is named the exact same way that we have the id so for pop-up effects what we would do is we would say let's just copy this for example just so i could show you this we're going to say module dot pop up underscore effects and make sure it is exactly the same way as the id and you're going to see why we want to do that in a sec so back inside of the manager whenever we click this button what we want to do is we want to call the handler and then we're going to index this like we would index a table and we're going to say setting dot id and then we want to use parentheses and what this is going to do is it's going to be similar to indexing a table so if we look inside of the module script if we had a variable inside of here called module dot music and let's just set that to 10 and we also set this to a variable for example right so local test equals this helper and then the setting id would actually 
index to this specific variable right here because module.music equals 10 and we're just saying that we pass through music in this generate setting for example now we don't want it to index a variable we want it to actually index and call a specific function the way that we do this is by saying handler and then the setting.id and then we just need to add parentheses to the end of this and then that is how we will call a specific function additionally we'll delete this variable that we create right there just for me to show you guys whenever we interact with the music setting it will directly call this function right here which is why we need to add the parentheses so that we're letting this know it is a function call so what we can do is we can go ahead and test this by starting our game let's open up the settings we can hear the music playing in the background currently now if we hit off we can see that false is printed to the console which means that the setting is now equal to false and we can hear the music is no longer playing then if we click the button again we can see it's set back to true and the music resumes playing so that setting works exactly as it should now if you click any of these other ones you're going to get an error because we don't actually have those functions created so with that being said ladies and gentlemen that's going to be it for this episode hopefully you guys did enjoy and hopefully it did help you guys out as always if it did make sure you smash like button also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when i upload more roblox development content additionally i do have a patreon if you'd like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that i made during this episode there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out with that being said i hope that you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next episode